Oh, glad to get that out of That was a truth bomb. <laughs> yeah, uh, regarding the Labour Party and the intelligentsia, and even Theresa May, to an extent, certainly the BBC and the CNN and the Democrats in America, um, you really need hit him with a truth bomb. Everything you've learned about that certain Saudi Arabian based ideology about uh, about the leader of this guy that had these visions, these visions from the Lord. Yes, he was, yeah, I, I know what you've been told. I, I know it, I've heard it. Oh, he was such a perfect individual, perfect role model to all men. This is what they tell him. This is what they tell to our, to our people. But this ideology is ideal for all mankind. It must take over all mankind because it's so peaceful and beautiful and wonderful. Everybody's equal under it. And we don't kill gays. We do. And, and everybody's welcome. They're not. And it's never enslaved people for 1400 years and done mass castrations of whites and mainly Africans. It really has. Um, yeah, I mean, this is the sort of nonsense that they've fed to our lecturers, our politicians, our, our journalists, like that, what's his name, James Field, Fielding that tried to set up our Tommy for, for a hit. That's what it looked like, wasn't it? They didn't finally publish his, his details, where he was, but, you know, I think they would have done. If he hadn't been interviewed by Tommy and, and criticised by Tommy, they would have. They would have printed where he was, so anyone could jump on a plane and go and find him. Now, of course, all the Labour Party and the Antifa and all the rest of the gang, all the rest of the far left, the hard left, these mask wearing, violent, anti fascists, we call themselves. Yeah, the Gestapo, violent people that beat people up on trains or on, on the way to the train station, who behave just like brown shirts, just like mid 1930s Nazis. I don't altogether blame you for having the attitude and the approach you have because. You've been told a total pack of lies about a certain ideology. Um, see, they know at college and when you're 16, 18 uh, and onwards, when you're at university studying for whatever, Bachelor of Science or, or a degree in you know, biochemistry or whatever, they know that 99% of people in Europe and America especially and Canada know nothing about this certain holy book or the Q or the H or the writings of uh, the biography of this uh, 7th century warlord because that's what it was, he really was uh, I don't want to give a blame you for shouting no, oh, racist, you know, you horrible bigots you Nazi fascist scum etc you know all these virtue signal keywords I don't want to give a blame you because you don't know anything about this ideology well, contrarily I do know quite a lot about this ideology my curiosity was stimulated many years ago when I was a young lad of my father who told me the basics. He said, oh, you know, don't believe anything you hear. They used to run into, charge into villages on horseback with sabres. They used to kill everybody. They used to commit massacres at every village they took. You know, this is what my father told me. And I hardly believed him at the time, but you know how it is. When you love your dad and you know he's a bloody clever, bloody clever individual <laughs> who knows everything about everything. <laughs> Um, that's largely how he managed to survive the war, World War Two. Um, my my gang, my family, uh, from a long line of patriots, they fought in virtually every conflict. You know, my father was in World War Two. My, my grandfather was in World War One in France. Uh, he had like a technical job, so he wasn't in the trenches. So he came home uh, just slightly wounded, but he was okay. Uh, you know, it goes back hundreds and hundreds of years. Even my surname was granted by the king. So you can imagine, you know, despite the rough and tumbles of life, you know, the, the bullying, the being picked on at work, you know, the, the refusals, you know, the, the classism we get from North and South, because I'm a Northerner, you know, how they look down on us constantly. You know, I've had a lot of respect for, for what my father told me, and I've reinforced this with learning a lot of this certain holy book unholy book as it is in reality and I'll tell you it, it's not as it's painted see most westerners most uh, people at university what they tend to think of is oh it's a holy book it must be like the bible then 
because they're too lazy to lock and we don't know where to lock and uh, most of the crap in this holy book the massacres and the perversions you know has been well hidden it's the truth they don't want the truth the truth for the west and for christianity is a great thing but the truth of this ideology is so savage and so violent and so invading and racist and supremacist they're not willing to let you know for instance um you've all heard about the crusades haven't you you know oh yeah all these terrible crusaders went out there and and they did terrible things and they killed people yeah yeah well sometimes they did but certainly on one of the crusades one of the last crusades they, they were uh that particular group were did turn into a gang of brigands they were excommunicated from the church but the fact is that richard of england richard the brave richard the lionheart whose statue stands outside the houses of parliament saw saw the rape and the enslavement of millions and millions of arabs arab christians and lands that had already been stolen by this empire by this savage empire and being the best warrior in Europe, the best knight in Europe, and after having defeated the French, the Welsh, the Scots, uh, virtually everybody, um, England at the time being relatively powerful, you know, it was already building up a navy at this time, you know, he decided that he was the man that was going to try and stop this Islamization of the Middle East. See, what you've got to remember about the Middle East is, if you know anything about history, uh, which that mock the right idiot should know about history because it's, I believe he used to teach us. <laughs> Love to know the sort of history I hasn't he taught. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, you will know that the whole Middle East with with Egypt and, and Jordan, and obviously Syria, all the countries around that area being in the back door, the backyard of uh, of the holy land obviously these were the first places to become christianized after the roman empire when I mean, the first roman soldiers used to get killed and gradually as time went on they were accepted and they were, they were seen as being loyal roman citizens and uh, of course as we know now with rome being, being the capital of catholicism uh, and it took over it took over the whole of europe and the middle east well the whole of the middle east was christian with a small jewish element like ten percent Jewish element was entirely Christian for over five hundred years. Jewish dominated for over five hundred years, and it was quite progressive. I mean, when you read this holy book, this unholy book, uh, you know, uh, like this leader, this seventh century Mo. I'll call him Mo. It could be anyone. There's loads of people called Mo. Aren't there? Uh, this seventh century Mo, you know, his tribe, his his Koresh tribe, were laughed at. They were the bottom feeders of the whole Arabian Peninsula. They really were because their job was walking alongside farting, smelly camels, day in, day out. You, know, you can imagine like the the wage for that wasn't very high at all. And in, indeed, they were also totally illiterate. The whole gang of them were illiterate, illiterate Bedouins who lived in tents on the move. So when you read this certain book, uh, it becomes quite obvious that they were laughed at. You know. Um, they were very envious of, of the Jewish villages that surrounded them and the Arabian Peninsula, around Medina and what's now Mecca. And, uh, and I, you know, they were going to get payback. They wanted to get payback. They were desperate to get payback and advancement because this tribe, as you could argue, the whole of the Middle East still still are today, were backward. We couldn't read or write. You know, we, couldn't, we didn't know how to raise cattle. We didn't know how to make anything. Didn't know how to be blacksmiths, you know, they were totally illiterate numbskulls, basically. But, uh, and then the prophet had his visions. Oh yes, he had his visions in the caves of Hira. And these visions, see, when he started this, uh, this dreamt up ideology, um, he, you know, it wasn't popular. Nobody wanted to know. There was only, oh, old Moses had these visions. Let's, put, let's pretend we're going to follow it. So let's believe. Let's keep the old 54-year-old happy, the old senile bugger. And, and he had very few followers. And uh, he wrote a few verses, like uh, peaceful verses, to avoid him being assassinated, because this was the favourite way of getting rid of him, which he used himself later on many people. He had many people assassinated in very cruel ways. I haven't got time to go into that, into the poking the eyes out and what have you. Um, but he had these visions, and these visions 
told him, you're the masters of the world. You're the best of people. You're the best in humanity. Superior race, the master race. All of us are dirty kufar, scum, rubbish, idiots, thick. Now, this is what it still says in the holy book. This is what it says about you, you socialists, <laughs> President Trump. This is what it says about you teachers, all you people that are in Antifa and screaming, yeah, you racist Nazis, when you point out this true mass grooming we we've seen in this country. And I saw it 24 years ago. And as now, as in Rotherham, I saw two police women, and they didn't want to know. They really did not want to know. They wouldn't act on it. I was willing to give statements. I actually spoke to two of the girls, these poor crying pretty little 14-year-olds, 13, 14-year-olds. And when, when I had a word with one of them, this was like 3 o'clock in the morning when no one else was around, when she'd just been let out of this pizza rape pit, um, been gang raped, basically. She'd gone in there expecting a drink and a... And, and a, maybe a boyfriend, and she just ended up being gang rapes. I mean, she, she looked in the right mess, and she was nearly crying. Uh, when I actually spoke to her, I said, look, look, I can guess what's gone on. You know, if you want anyone to be a witness, just just give my name in. My name's, my name's such and such. Just give me a name in. I'll, I'll stand by that. I heard, I heard you coming out. I'll say, I'll speak up for you if you want to give witness. And the poor girl just burst into tears and ran out to her. I think it was a taxi that was nearby. Sad, isn't it? And she was like a 13, she was no older than 14. You know, she was only just maturing, you know. But she was a very pretty, pretty young girl. But, you know, probably ended up pregnant. Um, what happens with a lot of these grooming cases, as in Charlene Downs, D-O-W-N-E-S, um, when they've been dupes and they think they're getting a boyfriend and they've lost the virginity, what happens is, you know, we'll start, like, texting the mates well come on you don't mind him do you maybe treat them like proper horse which is what it calls all western women in their book we're called we're called whores prostitutes we don't cover their hair we don't cover their ankles they're total prostitutes you have the right to use and abuse them that's what it says in their book and um you know, i don't know at the time i had a baby on the way and all i could think of was god that could be my that could be my daughter in a few years how oh, disgraceful is it that nobody's doing anything? I even spoke to my workmate about it. And he said, oh, we don't say anything about that. They'll call you a racist. This is going back 24 years, uh, 23, beg your pardon, 23 years ago. And then he said, oh, don't say anything. Because I said, well, they're raping our kids. Yeah, they're abusing our kids. God knows what they're doing up there. I can imagine what they're doing. If you get four men on top of a 13-year-old pretty girl, can you imagine what they're doing? Just like they always do in England. It's not just rape, it's multi office rape. It's knives at the throat, so you better take this here, or you know, I'll do you. This is the sort of thing. So when these girls, you know, a couple of weeks later, a few weeks later, they find out they're pregnant, they find out they've been duped and used, and they've lost their innocence, you know, and they say, well, you, you better get with me, you better stay with me, or I'm gonna go to the police. Well, this is when girls start disappearing. The Lancashire police say there's scores, there's probably dozens or scores gone missing. And if it's like that there, in London, we're being over 50% ethnic. Not, you know, some of those are Christians, to be fair, but a lot of them are, belong, in this idea, belong to this ideology. You can imagine how many, how many rapes and murders go on in London and Luton, as what happened to Tommy Robinson's second cousin, Jeanette who he mentions at the Oxford Address. Try and watch that. So the next time you're for guys and you hard left labour, new Marxist, and you think you're justified to throw bricks and, and thunder flashes and spray, spray like far rights as you call them, spray patriots with your in, just think you have been well and truly duped. And please go on to Islam Watch, look at the grooming gang statistics, which I've got 200 on, on my laptop here, 265 pages on every page. Nine out of ten is, should we say, not a Western, not a Christian name. Yeah, they're all Abdul's, Mo's, yeah, every one of them. And if the odd English name, Irish name, Polish name mixed in, but nine out of ten on every page of 265 pages are not Western names. Put it that way. Okay, see you guys. And if, if, oh, if Mott Wright wants to copy this, go ahead, mate, with your, you can put your little amateurish smiley face on it's very easy to do it on photoshop just put the cross on and drag it out okay i'll see you guys i uh, hope all you guys in america can pass this on um i've always had, 
having big problems with his channel was being shut down and any of the truth from trying to tell being you know silenced been censored as we know um okay thanks for that guys bye bye